And this game here is a damn good example of that. Atlantis The Lost Tales is a cryo interactive game released in 1997 and is one of the better examples of ambition done right? Question mark? I would have to say that their most beloved example is their first interpretation of Dune, released back in 1992. This was the game that started it all for Cryo. Ironically, Dune was also what ended Cryo's legacy. Frank Herbert's Dune came out in 2001, nearly 10 years later, and it was a commercial flop, sad to say. Having not played this game as of yet, I will reserve any comments on what went down on this one, but I will say this. If it was anything at all, like the mindfuck complete waste of time that was Atlantis 2, aka Beyond Atlantis, then yeah, I think I could guess fairly well how Frank Herbert's Dune went down with people who played it. True, the Cryo Legacy does not have a spotless record, but what made the development company so appealing to me was how much its games reeked with ambition. I can't hate on the development company for that. But the one thing they really needed was somebody in there to give them more focus on what the hell they were thinking. I guess you could say Cryo Interactive went the way of George Lucas at some point after they broke away from Virgin, which was their publishing partner until the mid-90s. After that, Cryo started their own distribution company over in their home of France, while foreign publishers like our friends at Dreamcatchers continued to claim the publishing rights for their games. Still, even in their later years, Cryo did continue to come out with some you know, pretty interesting games, so I can't say that their creative juices weren't completely drained in those years leading up to Frank Herbert's Dune. I'm guessing that one of the main factors with Cryo folding also had to do with the so-called lackluster interest of adventure games overall. A whole lot of that bullshit was around mostly throughout the early 2000s, before Siberia came along. This was right within the time period when Cryo filed for bankruptcy. I have to say that my feelings for Atlantis The Lost Tales is mixed, pretty much. And I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. Review websites seem to have split opinions on this game. When it comes to me, my thoughts simply come down to the fact that there are many good things about this game, and there are many not so good things about this game. It's just one of those things where you have to weigh the good with the bad and run with it. Indeed, this game has so many things going for it. On the graphics department, this game still wins me over, even to this very day. Back in 1997, Riven was about the only other game that looked as good as this. Moreover, the ideas that work in this game, well, they're freaking wonderful. The characters here feel fresh and original. The story itself is loaded with such a fantastic blend of political intrigue and ancient mythology that'll just make your nose gush blood with pure excitement. There's moments in the game where you have to be stealthy and careful, and those moments are well done. Just, you know, don't be surprised if you end up getting caught or killed quite a bit in this game. But it adds a proper amount of suspense to the classic old-school adventure game format. 
I'm just glad I'm not dealing with yet another Mist Clone. And the music! Oh my god, the music! Oh my god, it's total epic shit cranked up to an 11, man! <laughs> Well, first off, when I say everything looks great in the graphics department, I mean that the backdrops look great. The character models do not look great. They look pretty ridiculous, with their very limited movement and no facial expressions to speak of. As for the model designs themselves, you know, this was 1997, people. Laura Croft from the first Tomb Raider game looked much more ridiculous in design, and that was just a year previous. Granted, though, you know, comparing the first Tomb Raider game with The Lost Tales is like comparing apples and oranges. Regardless, there's still no excuse for the vain attempts at character movement in The Lost Tales. Not even by 1997 standards. How would you like it if I just started doing this for the whole review? Yeah! That also reminds me, the lips on the characters are synced with the characters' voices, which, okay, I admit, is pretty freaking impressive for 1997. Even back when I first played this game, though, I always thought their mouths looked so freaky whenever they talked, especially considering the fact they have no teeth. They look like black holes of death, ready to suck my soul out of my body at a moment's notice. Hey! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! I'll swallow your soul! <laughs> swallow this. The English voice actors aren't, you know, they're not bad. Uh, well, okay, I can't say they're good either, but um, a handful of the voices seem to fit their characters well. You, you know, others not so much. There's also some bits of dialogue, or, okay, a, a lack of dialogue for that matter, that have left me either in hysterics or utter confusion. Thankfully, there is more than enough character in all of the voices to cancel out the weird expressionless character models we have to look at. The saving system in the game is checkpoint based. That means that you will have to go back and replace certain elements over and over again if you find yourself restarting. If you forget to retrieve an inventory item shortly before you reach a checkpoint, you must go back and retrieve the same object again if you happen to get caught or killed. This particular little detail is hard for me to categorize as a bad thing, as it does increase the suspense of the game for the player. I wish more games incorporated this element. However, And this is a super huge mega however, because I cannot stress the importance of what I am about to say enough in order to have a saving system like this, developers, Seriously, need to watch carefully with what they're doing with it. And after going back and playing this game again, I, your humble host, <laughs> have come to a stunning realization. <laughs> there is at least one point in this game where the checkpoint saving system royally fucks the player straight up the ass. The reason for this being is you need a clue to an upcoming puzzle, and if you just happen to just whiz on by that clue, you can't go back to it, because the checkpoint saving system saves the game right when you literally cannot turn back. And in case you're wondering, no, you can't reload earlier checkpoint saves. 
How is it that I love this game again? In short, the checkpoint saving system can work as a means of bringing up suspense, but developers better fucking know where to put those checkpoints in the game so that players will not have to resort to a walkthrough with there being virtually no other option present. I would call this a huge game-breaking flaw. I'll point out this flaw later on in the review. Again though, other than that ramming up the ass, I can't say I have much in the way of complaints about the checkpoint-based saving. However, speaking of getting rammed up the ass, the puzzles! Oh my god! The puzzles! The puzzles here are not for the faint of heart. Then again, the, you know, that's the way it was with a lot of games back in the day. It, you know, it, was, it wasn't just cryo. I always think back to The Longest Journey and one of its ultimate saving graces, which was a dialogue tree of all the things that were said by other characters in the game. Here you could review the things that were said to you because sometimes important things that are said in the game come and go so fast you don't have time to process what was just said. With The Lost Tales, you do get quite a bit of that speedy dialogue. More often though, it's not even the speedy dialogue, but rather the music that will randomly just start blasting away whenever the focus of the game cuts to a talking character, leaving you with no fucking idea with what was just said. Thankfully, it only does that on rare occasions, but even then, I'm still not so sure a dialogue tree would have saved this game from the actual puzzles themselves. I would say the difficulty is, uh, is a toss-up, yeah, for the most part, meaning that it all depends on how closely observant you are with the dialogue and the gameplay elements. And then, there are those very few exceptions. With those exceptions, I would indeed be tempted to side with the complainers over at least one or two so-called puzzles that are really gameplay elements designed to lose your vocal cords screaming bloody murder your computer screen as the sheer anger and frustration you feel melts your brain into a gelatinous blob bubbling and oozling and steaming out of every orifice of that pretty little head of yours. considered there's no algebra present in this game so yay <sighs> personally this is a game that is near and dear to my heart despite its beyond aggravating moments but it's mainly because of its inventive story and setting plus the nostalgic factor this game is a huge nostalgia trip for me yes I admit it, my opinion of this game may be biased, but I've always kind of wondered if Sherry Berkheimer could get the movie rights to this game and make something that wasn't what the Lone Ranger ended up being. Atlantis The Lost Tales would make for an amazing movie going experience. As a game though, I find myself really on the fence about it. The difficulty of the puzzles and the slightly mishandled saving system may bring it down considerably for many people, and there's no getting around that. In terms of recommending it, I would say give it a chance at least. If you're looking for a challenge, believe me, you sure as hell found it with this game. Good God, I, this thing was a damn challenge just trying to fucking record all of it. If the problems here sound like they're too much for your taste, you know, I would still say give it a shot anyway if you happen to see it on for sale really, really, really cheap on COG, on that GOG thing or Steam or something like that. Or you can just say fuck it and watch the rest of this review, which I'm sure most of you out there will do anyway. 
Hopefully, though, I can give a better recommendation to this game once we get into the full review. I don't think that's likely, though.